All right guys, welcome back to Black Acre Ranch. My name's Jeff. So today we're finally doing that long awaited topic I'm sure that everybody's been buzzing about and that's the body condition scoring. All right, I've said it wrong before. It's not body confirmation scoring, it's body condition scoring of buffalo. This is in essence, how to know if they're fat or not. Stick with us. <laughs> All right guys, so body condition scoring is here. So if you haven't noticed, look at that green pasture back there. That is pasture six. We got another two and a half inches of rain. Now the forecast has nothing left in it. But in a couple days, we're gonna be moving them over to that, letting them eat it. So hey, one pasture, I'll take one pasture right now, give them some good grass. But anyway, back to the topic. Speaking of the feed that we're doing, body condition scoring, I have said before it's body confirmation scoring and that's actually incorrect. Confirmation of a buffalo relates to its like skeletal structure, how it's built. Body condition relates to the fat. It's a way to gauge their optimal health in relation to like their productivity, their profitability, fertility, all these other things. It's almost like BMI, right? I think that's a little crock, but whatever. It's almost like that, okay? You're just kind of getting an idea of how much fat is on them. So body condition scoring, BCS, first started out, I think, with sheep. And they kind of did that because they have such a wool structure on them. They're all like chubby, fat, and lazy. Anyway, you couldn't really see what they actually looked like underneath. Frankly, when you shear those suckers, they look like, wow, old women. But it developed with kind of sheep, moved over through the cattle industry, and has kind of been developed for the buffalo. So that's where we're at with this. Like I said, it's all about a matter of figuring out how much fat they have on them. So what you're really trying to do is just figure out your feed influence that you give them. If you want to call it feed influence, I don't know. Are you feeding them enough that they stay healthy looking? Or are you not feeding them enough of the right stuff that they kind of look emaciated, a little thin? Or are you feeding them too much that they look like freaking obese puff balls that you want to pop? So. That's what we're looking at today, is how do you tell? Because buffalo, you can't go up and just go pet them. I'm sorry dudes, you just can't. And uh, the only time you really get a hands-on feel is if they're in the squeeze chute, and you can kind of tell. But until then, you gotta kind of learn how to do this. So body, BCS, body condition scoring, is something that kind of, it's, it's an art, okay? It's not just something you just go plug and chug, one plus one equals two. You gotta get a feel for it, okay? And in buffalo, it's a little bit different because like I said, you can't just go up and pet them and you say, hey, that one looks skinny. Pet, pet, nope, that's actually got a lot of fat on it. You just can't do that. The other thing that's unique with buffalo, I'm just staring at Ahmed, low and proud. Anyway, so, what I was saying was, with buffalo that makes it difficult is that they change their metabolisms throughout the year, okay? So at some points they're gonna be wanting to be a little heavier, other times they may be a little bit lighter. If you catch them on a bad day or in a bad season, they may look worse, but there may be a reason for it, okay? Winter time, they lose weight. Summer during the rut and the breeding season, they will lose weight. So those are times that you're gonna be expecting to see a lower score. Other times, fall and spring, they're gonna boost up after winter and they're gonna boost up after the summer. So those are times they're gonna go ahead and get fatter, okay? So keep that in mind when you're doing this. Um, as the untrained professional, I do not believe that my scores will be ultimate. You can probably get five different people to look at the animals and they're probably gonna be scored slightly different. So keep that in mind. You just wanna get good enough that you can kinda of see and gauge it and then get to know your animals you'll see kind of how they hold their weight different, so. The scoring system is based on a five point system. One meaning really thin and looking bad. Five meaning it's super chubby, way too fat, and not looking good, okay? You want your animal usually at least two or above. For them to reproduce, ideally three would be great, okay? Two and a little over, a little above two, not so bad. Four, okay, if you start getting too big, there could be concerns of just birthing problems. So, for instance, as an example, people might try and fatten their bulls up and all their cows up in the winter because in the winter, they will lose weight. They'll lose 10% of their body weight. So they don't want them getting too low over winter, so they'll kind of puff them up. They go through winter, they hit the spring, they're not looking bad, spring grasses come, they're able to get the stuff going, and then they can have their baby. 
Same kind of thing in the summer is before you hit the rut, you might flush them, you might do whatever to kind of help put some extra weight on because your bulls are definitely gonna lose some weight. Any of the mothers who have been birthing calves, they're gonna start losing weight. There's gonna be a draw as they nurse. So you're gonna play with this fluctuation a little bit throughout the year. And this is all part of a feed plan. If you haven't heard of that or don't know much about it, I didn't either. So <laughs> it's kind of how you're gonna gauge what you're gonna feed when to make sure they're an optimal help throughout the year. And you gotta pick a start date and end date. That's another video, another time. But it's a point system, one through five. So let's look into these point systems and see what they're like. All right, the body, body condition scoring, like I said, was all about how much fat is on the animal and making sure they're getting fed well, okay? There are five different areas that they look at. I'm gonna put it here on the screen. This is like a sample score sheet that they can use, or you can use as you go around and do your buffalo. All right, they're gonna have the tag spots so you can keep track of the number. The rib section, the spine section, there's gonna be the hip bone, the hump, and the tailbone, okay? Then there's gonna be an overall score which they all get kind of added up. So in there, you're gonna have a point system you're gonna use. In each one of these categories, you assign it a one, two, three, four, or five. One could be bad, five can be bad, ideally it's around three, and you just add this up, average it out, and that's their score. And you can do this throughout the year, different times of the year, because like I said, it can change throughout the year. This illustration here is just a sample of what a buffalo looks like and kind of pinpointing where things are at. Okay, obviously the hump is the hump. Then you've got the tail head, that's where the tail connects right to the body, the butt. Then you've got the hip bone, which is kind of the hip and the cheeks, and then how it kind of rounds up by the tail. All right, then you've got the loin area, the spine that goes between the hump and the hip bone area, or the hook bone kind of, kind of area, the loin. And of course, then you got the ribs, the ribs. We all know where ribs are at. My wife and I are gonna go around and look at different animals. We're gonna do some scoring. We'll kind of bring that back so you guys can see it. And then we'll give you some graphics in the end. I'll kind of just voice over it of just some visual cues to look at when you're looking at the animals. So hopefully we all can learn together and point out some things that maybe I've been guilty of, but you don't think about with all of this scoring. Charlotte and I have gone around. We've scored a number of these ladies. There's three that I want to use as samples, but I want to kind of give you some context for some of these, okay? First, um, the loin area. When we talk about the spine, this is kind of the area. Here you'll see a graphic that's between the hip bone and the butt cheeks, and then right above the ribs before the hump comes all the way down. And if you took a cross section, this is what you'd get looking from the rear, okay? is gonna have a, a peak ridge at the top, but it's more how sunken down and concaved is it. So obviously you see one is pretty concave, two has a slight concaveness, three is pretty flat, and then it just gets bigger and bigger for four and five. All right, that's the loin area. Okay, then you have a tail head. Um, we'll show you a sample here. It's the back section on a buffalo. That's where the tail meets the hips, okay? That kind of area kind of sinks or can sink between two cheekbones on either side of it. So it's kind of the degree to which that happens. The hump, you're looking for the, the humpness. Kind of if you're looking dead straight down the animal, kind of how round it is, and then how it comes down off that hump and meets into the shoulder. If it's a sharp top line, if it's coming down vertical and then kind of starts to bulge out, that's more of a one. Whereas what you're looking for is a well-developed one, not bulging out but it actually kind of comes out. And you want to see some differentiation a little bit from the shoulder to the hump, okay? All of this stuff is a sliding scale, guys, and this is why it's, it's so hard for any one person to be exact across the board. Is there a right answer? I don't know that there is. It's more of, do you have a consistent bias in how you approach these things that over time you understand your animal? I think that's more of it for you as an operator. So don't get caught up about what's the right answer, okay? Something I do want to point out though on all of these things. Sometimes we say, hey, I can see ribs, your animal's too skinny, okay? Catch these definitions. On number one for ribs, prominent in summer, ribs visible in winter. Two, some ribs visible in summer and winter. Three, may be visible in summer, but not sharp or distinct. Edges are rounded. Number four, may be visible in summer. 
Okay, so my point is that from one, two, three, and four on the scale, ribs are visible. Okay, so don't think, hey, the ribs, man, they're too skinny. It's the degree in which, how sharp or distinct. And if you can define that, you're better than any lawyer, all right? What does that mean? You tell me, okay? Same thing on the tail head. Number one, devoid of fat, deep sunkenness. Two, sunken depression on both sides. Three, slight hollowing on either side. Still a sink, right? Number four, slight depression on either side. There's gonna be a depression still, okay? Again, the degree. Same thing goes on the hip bone, okay? And a lot of these things. So whenever we're scoring one through five, and, and, and I'll definitely have a sheet up here of what this is that I'm reading from. And it's from, you know, so you can see it. But it's from, I think, some Canadian, I don't know, it's not reference. Some Canadian people did it or something like this. I think it was at school, those research institutions, you know. But uh, this is kind of a sheet here. You can see one, two, three, four, five. And I'll try and make sure, hopefully it's readable on your screen, but you just go through, all right? So we did some animals. Let me just get to them real quick. Charlotte and I did it. And I wanna point these out because they differ, all right? Charlotte's way of scoring was different than mine. So first of all, bar talk. Here's what bar talk looks like. Different views, okay? We looked and we assigned his rib value. We both said it was a two. You can see him, it's more pronounced, but I've seen it a lot worse, which would be a one. So I said, you know what? It's not that bad, but it's not great. I did a two, she did two. Then we went to the spine. The spine had a little bit more of a concaveness. It wasn't a slight concaveness, that loin area, you know? It wasn't flat. It wasn't super bad. So I gave it a one plus and so did Charla. So sometimes an animal may not be quite one, but they're not good enough for two. Well, then put a scale in between, all right? So we're using minuses to be 0.25 higher. Like, so if it's a one plus, it's 1.75. A one minus, 1.25. Come up with whatever works for you guys. You're just giving a point value, okay? So that's what we did. We gave him a one plus. Not quite good enough to be a two, but definitely not a one. Then we did the hip bone. The hips, you can see, are there. Um, they're not super sunken in. We've seen them worse. We both gave him a two. Then you go ahead and you hit the tail head. Sharla gave him a two, and I gave him a one plus. And the hump, we both gave him two. So we took all of those scores, we added them up, and I got an overall score of 1.9 for Bartok. Not great, okay? She got 1.95. So even our variations don't really show up that much when you average it across five. All right, I'll do a couple other ones. And I'll just put these on the screen that you can see them real quick. Charla's and mine. Okay, you can see that we're a little bit different. I have some one pluses. She has ones across, well, actually she has twos across the board. I think I was a little bit more harsh on number 130. Um, and I gave a couple twos here and there. My overall score came out to 1.85 and hers was two. Again, cumulatively across the board, we average them not that much different. Okay, the other one, 12. All right, now 12, guys, she's one of our two moms. And this is why we're messing around with feed and stuff, is we're trying to figure out how much feed we have to give them that they look good, even when lactating. Right now, with what we're doing, we know that if you don't have any calves, you're generally looking good. But the lactating ones are still struggling. So across the board, I gave her a 1.45, and Charla gave her just a one flat out across it. So obviously, she's needing some help. now. Keep in mind, some of this could be the rest of the herd was really scoring pretty good. Almost around three, upper twos, three, one was a little chunkier, you know? So if there's only one or two that are outliers, maybe it's a parasite issue, okay? I know she's lactating, but 99, who's the other mother, doesn't quite score as bad. So we're gonna try and take care of that. All right, so those are the scores, guys. You know, you can kind of see that, you know, we wanted to show you an animal that are lactating like the mom. Okay, number 12, we know she doesn't look good. There's a lot of dogs out here, full moon, I don't know, whatever, but we wanted to show you some that didn't quite look good. Across the board, generally, the cows are looking decent. We see a lot more activity from Ahmed. Ahmed looks really good. 
So again, fluctuations you're going to see in the animals, you got to take into consideration maybe possible worming issues that you have to do, who sample them, try and check. I, I guess if I was to stress a couple things, just make sure you understand you have a bias and it's going to be different than somebody else's. Just try and be consistent. That's all. And again, you're only measuring how much fat, how you're doing at feeding the animals and how much they're retaining. If you have a too fat of an animal, you don't want to suck weight off them super fast. And if you have too low, you can't pile tons of feed on them really quick either, okay? You can cause problems. These animals don't add that much weight that fast. So anyway, that's bison conf condition scoring, right? See, I almost do it again. It's bison condition scoring, right? Yes, all right, I did that right. And it's all about how much fat is on it. So keep these pointers in mind. I hope you guys learned something. We appreciate it. It's getting dark. I don't know how much of me you can see. Luckily, I'm wearing white. And uh, otherwise, we're going to lose track of where these buffalo are pretty quick. So we're going to end it here. We appreciate you joining along, guys. Keep with us, and we will talk to you next time. Oh, and if you're a bison producer and you want to add some stuff in the comments, by all means, I'm open to it. Um, always ready to learn. So I don't, I don't know everything. I'm just trying to learn as much as we can. So anyway, catch you guys next time. Like and subscribe. See ya. Bye. Mm -hmm.